What's up guys? I'm the washer and dryer guy. I've been repairing and refurbing washers and dryers since 2011. If this video helps you, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I will answer you. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the dryers that have the filters that come out the top. These are made by several different name brands. Most of it's owned by Whirlpool, but they still stick their stickers on it. But uh, we're actually, I'm going to show you, use this guy as my example, it's a roper, and show you my quick test. It takes about a minute for me to go through and do a quick test to see what's wrong with them. They've been making this type of dryer. This is actually one of the older ones I got right now. This is a 68. So with a filter coming out the top, they've been making this type of dryer that's nearly, like I've actually opened this up and refurbed this one, nearly exactly the same as the ones that have been made recently. So... What I do is when they come in, before I plug them in, I'll open the door. And I'm going to check the lid switch. So, lid switch is right here. If it's clicking, 90% chance that's a good lid switch. If it is just flopped down, doesn't make a click noise when you push it in, probably lid switch is going out. And the symptoms of that would be the dryer drum will continue to turn while after you open the door while it's on. Or... It's the opposite, and then the switch is stuck off, and you can't turn the dryer on at all because it thinks the door is open. So after that, I'm going to reach in. This is number two thing I do, and I'm going to push the drum counterclockwise. I'm going to feel if I can feel resistance from the belt around the motor. If I don't, it means the belt is broken or just come off. All right. The, which after you do this a couple times, you can easily feel this. It's very easy to turn when it doesn't have a belt on it and it has some resistance when it does. And you can kind of hear the motor, the motor sits right about here. You can kind of hear the motor turning. Next thing I'm gonna look at is right here where it breathes in, the fan's just below that right here. And it's sucking through right here. If it's got a ton of lint, you can take a flashlight and look real easily. Built up right here. The next things I'm gonna look at are probably what's wrong. It was probably stopped up right there and has blown a fuse of some sort. So I'm going to walk around the back side of the machine after that. And one thing, I'll also pull the, uh, I'll pull the filter out and see if it has a big hole in the filter. I always double check that. Same thing will happen. It'll get stopped up and it'll blow one of these other fuses. All right, next thing to check. I will take my tester and here's how I'm going to refer to this. One on most testers means it's gonna be a bad fuse. I'm not gonna go into super detail how to use a tester. When you're in the alms mode, this particular tester has a little beeping function when it hears and it goes to zero, it beeps. So one side is shooting a signal, the other side's listening for the signal. So if there is no connection in between, it won't hear it and you won't hear a beep. So I'm gonna take this tester and I'm gonna test. And again, I have this unplugged. Don't do this when it's plugged in. I'm gonna test from here on top of this to right there to the other red wire. This is the heating element and I'm checking the high limit thermostat. And if it will not come on, it will not heat. So this should beep when I'm between the two. And then the next thing I'm gonna check while I'm right here, this is a fuse. And if it's a temperature fuse, when it gets so hot, it will pop. And if it's not beeping, when I test between the two, it means it's bad. I'll test the low limit between the two red wires, and if it's not beeping, it means it's bad. So it should beep here, should beep here, should beep there. Another thing I'm gonna test is from the top here to the frame of the actual heating element. If this beeps, if you have a connection between these two, it means that the wire on the heating element that's just behind here has popped and has fused with the wall. And that's one issue that's always hard to find, but that's a quick way to figure it out is test from here to the frame. Or also I would check from here to the frame as well. That's the same, same thing. It, but it could be that the wire is broken here and it's fused here. So good thing to check. All right, from there, there's another fuse, our fuse uh, right here that will pop at a certain temperature, which is actually a much lower temperature. So we'll see if it's popped should beep here, should have connection. If it has no connection between the two, it's gone bad, needs to be replaced. But don't just replace these fuses when things go wrong. There's a reason. The reason is it's either stopped up from this pipe to the outside of the house, 
or bent pipe or I've actually seen it where there was a it could also be a bad thermostat I forgot to mention the vent was going into the slab and then out of the house and it was full of water from a uh, from a messed up uh, drain system off the roof and it was just pouring down and filled the whole thing with water and it couldn't exhale. So it just, it's just like putting your hand over a hair dryer. If you put your hand over, it's gonna overheat the hair dryer and it'll pop that little thermal fuse real quick, but those reset themselves. These don't reset themselves. So the next thing to check, which most of the time, that's why we checked for lint in there. Lint will be caught in the bottom of this catch. This, this is where the filter goes. And if someone pulls the filter out while it's running, it will shoot lint right here and usually build up or it just slowly builds up lint over time and it gets harder and harder for it to breathe. But take these four screws off, check right there. It's probably to take the housing off. You also have to take the two screws out from under the filter in the top. Probably your problem. This is extremely common. Um, one other thing to check if you still are having issues, these are very uncommon things to happen. But the next thing is here's the starter, which they're always different. Have someone on the other side, take your tester with it unplugged still and go between these two. When they press the button, it should beep or show that it has current between the two. And the next thing, which is very unlikely, but actually is this dryer has the problem, is the timer has gone bad. And I'll show you how to test that real quick. That'll be my last thing to show you. If um, One other thing to check real quick is to make sure that the plug is not messed up. If you look up from right here, the wires that run right there to where this terminal block goes up. I've seen several times where they haven't tightened these screws down or they've lost a screw and they just stole one off of somewhere else and it's the wrong thread and they weren't able to tighten it. And a loose connection on these will, over, will create heat. A bad connection creates heat. That's why if you have a wire that's slightly cut, it will overheat in the spot that's slightly cut and burn the wire up. Same thing happens here if it's a loose connection it will overheat the wire and burn the wire that's going up here. So you kind of will look, I can't quite show you with the camera, but look up here and see if these wires are burned up. If they're burned up, it's probably going to be the terminal block wasn't tightened down, or you'll notice that one of the screws is weird and it's just the wrong screw they put in and they couldn't tighten it down. All right, so let's go to the hard one. I already took, and these timers come off in a couple different ways. This one, you have to remove the head which isn't that hard to do and squeeze these guys to remove it. These plugs only go on one way, so I'll unhook all these. You don't normally have to unhook them, but I already know it's bad and I'm about to ship it to a refurber that's gonna fix it for me. And to get this off, if you have to, sometimes you don't, you can take a flathead and push up underneath here, or better, uh, you can take a uh, putty knife, like I did, and push it up underneath there and this will push forward a little bit and the head will come up a little bit and you can take the head off of the whole unit. So I took this and I opened it up already. It's gonna be two screws that are holding the motor on, hold the front cap in as well. So after you take these two screws for the motor off, this will come open. And here's the last thing that could be wrong. You'll look in here and see if, let me see if I can get the camera focused. See if any of these connections are messed up and if you look this one is messed up right here and it's hard to tell Oop, I don't get back to, on here it's hard to look at where my finger is all right it's hard to tell but there's actually some soot against this wall and these connections are slightly melted if you want to test this which is always hard to figure this out if these are bad or not even with a tester you can test between this third one and this last one here when it's on when the actual heat and element should be on so put it at like 40 or put it at energy preferred in the middle of these two make sure you're at something that has heat if you put it here it's not going to help you out set it at one of these three and know where they are and check all three positions and if you're not getting a good connection then that's going to be what your problem is and I send these off to get refurb now. You can go on eBay, look up your model number, and then you basically mail it to the guy for $35 plus $5 in shipping. You send it to him, and he refurbs it and mails it back. 
and some people can just clean up these connections a little bit, take a little piece of sandpaper and I'll, and really get in there and clean them without messing anything up and it'll just start working. I don't recommend this. I'd rather just get it referred by the guy because a lot of times you're fixing a symptom of the actual problem. This may work. You can give it a try, see if it works for a long period of time. A lot of times it'll just work for a little while and then it'll do it again because you're fixing the symptom and not the problem. The problem usually, at least in my thought of what's going on here, are these plastic pieces. There's three of them and they'll wear a groove into the little V that the timer runs around. And this timer has been used so much that it wears a little groove and it's not pushing because it has a groove in it as hard against these pieces that are pushing together and creating the connection. So when it's not pushing quite as hard, it's creating sparks in between them. It's not making a good connection. The same as what we're talking about with the terminal block overheating, these will overheat and melt a little bit just like they are now. So I, when I get him refurb, he has all this cleaned up, and I've never noticed that these are worn afterwards. So I'm thinking he has a way to replace these. Here's the information on the person I get my timers refurb by. And the next cheapest timer on there was something like $80. I'll put a picture of it. So just sort it by price, and he's usually always the cheapest one on there. Also, because it's a service that you're getting through eBay, it's kind of weird. He has you message him and make sure you understand that he's not just going to mail you a timer about you mailing yours in to him for, to repair first. So just read the description on the eBay ad. You'll, you'll get it. But uh, the first time I did it, it was a little bit strange. Just give me a heads up. All right, guys. So that is it. That's my full test. I know it's a lot of words, but when I'm actually doing this, I shoot through these really quickly on this test. I'll do... Open the door, quick test, flip that switch, turn it. I'll go to the back, pull those off, test, test, test. If that's not it, I'll test. I'll open up the timer. I don't test the timer. I just open up and look and see if it's messed up on the inside. It's just faster to me. And then the last thing I usually check is the actual starter switch because that's the last thing that usually goes out. Strangely, you would think that goes out all the time, but not, not as often as you think. All right, that's it, guys. If this video helped, please like and subscribe. Sorry, I didn't have a camera person with me today, so I had to hold it myself. But any questions, put them down in the comments down below, and I'll try to answer them for you. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. If this video helped, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And if you have any questions at all, put them in the comments below, and I'll be sure to answer them.